Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Assalamu alaikum my brothers and sisters If you're watching this video and it's Salah time please pause it and go pray and come back when you're done Please check out the description section of this video to donate to Palestine and to support the channel I've sent a clip of a new podcast where Andrew Tate expressed his grief about how civilians in Palestine are being eliminated and is disgusted at how the West is okay with it so much so that they put sporting events and pop star drama ahead of children women and men being terminated by Zionists. Tay also spoke about Christian apologists being jealous of Muslims, as well as the hand of the mainstream media in softening the situation through their genocide justification reporting. I've seen certain Christian apologists being so deep in their anti-Muslim bigotry that they're actually pro-Israel, despite many Christian Palestinian civilians losing their lives to the IDF, and despite what the Talmud says about Prophet Jesus boiling an excrement in the afterlife. Astaghfirullah. That's why I don't don't get about these internet Christian apologists. How can you support a group of people who say such things about your God? Is it just so you can further insult Muslims, even if it's at the ultimate expense and ridicule of your own religion? It makes no sense. They basically hate Muslims more than they respect their own faith. Tay also spoke about how what has taken place in Palestine since October 7th has made him feel sad and helpless that he's unable to do something to stop it. And I know for a fact that most Muslims feel the same way. Let's roll the clip. We can also all agree here that a genocide has taken place and children are dying. We're seeing the videos for the first time and I feel like the Western population has been sanitized to violence because of the way it's purported and spoken about in the Western media. They'll say, terrorists ran in with machetes and they killed people and they chopped their hands off. So in retaliation, we took out targeted strikes. Now, machetes chopping people's hands off sounds graphic and terrible and targeted strikes doesn't sound terrible, but bombs kill and a building collapsing on the head of children is not a pleasant sight. There's no nice way to die. You'll get dismembered by a bomb, just like you'll get dismembered by a machete. You'll lose an arm to a bomb, just like you'll lose an arm to a machete. Mm. And the Western world is very sanitized to violence. Oh, we took out tactical bombing strikes on this thing. Tactical bombing strikes means little children buried under rocks. It means decapitated kids. It means women bleeding to death. It means men losing their children and their wives. And when the Western world or the people who are on the favorable side of the media commit violence, it's reported in a certain way. And when the other team does it, it's reported in a completely different way with completely different language. And I think that barbarism is being committed against the people of Palestine. Mm. And it doesn't matter how we try and wrap it up or the fact that we drop a bomb from a plane as opposed to a man does something on the ground or however we report it. If you actually look at the videos, it's truly disgusting. And I feel deep shame and deep guilt in my heart that this is happening and there's not much I can do about it. Maybe it's my masculine instinct, but I, I felt sad ever since that begun. I felt noticeably more sad every day since October 7th. And what makes me most sad is that something like the Super Bowl will come on and people just don't give a shit about children being blown to pieces because the Super Bowl is on and yeah. this game and oh my God, look at this singer and this crowd. Look at them. How you can give a about something like the Super Bowl while at the exact same time thousands of children are being blown to smithereens. Maybe it's because I have kids myself. I don't know. Yeah. But I just think it's such a sad world we live in that people's consciousness has been lowered to such a point where they're more obsessed with putting a ball over a line than they are with preserving the sanctity of human life regardless of their color or their religion or their creed or their country. Yeah. I think it's disgusting. I spend millions of dollars every year feeding children, myself, in the worst countries in the world. In Syria, we try and get food into Palestine whenever we can. There's no bigger fraternity or brotherhood than Islam. That's the bottom line of it. It doesn't matter what color you are. It doesn't matter where you're from. You're all brothers in Islam, and it truly is a beautiful feeling. I came on your show and spoke my respect for Islam before I reverted. I'd have respected it for a very long time, and yeah. I think if you're truly a religious person and you do believe in God, you're going to see the attractions of Islam. I've had conversations with very devout, very strict Christians. And when I talk to them, they debate Christianity versus Islam against me, and it's quite a friendly debate. But when I say, aren't you jealous of the fact that we stick up for what we believe in and you Christians allow yourself to be mocked endlessly, I see in their eyes, they're infuriated. Everyone is jealous of the fact that Islam means what it says and says what it means unapologetically, because that's a masculine trait. It's a warrior's religion. And if you're a warrior and you want to say what you mean and mean what you say, you're going to feel massive respect for Islam. And I respected it for a long time. And I guess if you respect something long enough, you end up believing in it.
The Western media has been painting Muslims in a negative manner for decades now. So much so that they reuse the associated buzzwords and labels that they created and programmed people with to stir up negative emotions and discrimination in their audiences' minds whenever they have a new anti-Muslim agenda to push. If Muslims were doing what Israelis are currently doing, there would be an uproar and swift military action against them from the West. But not so when non-Muslims do it. It's not even labelled as extremism. These tricks in the use of language and justification of oppression is exactly what Islamophobia is. We are viewed as subhuman and portrayed as either deficient in intelligence or as savages compared to the enlightened West. Muslim countries and people are just as advanced if not more so than the West, which is clear as day when you look at places like Saudi, UAE, Kuwait, Qatar, Oman etc. And most Muslims are peaceful and family oriented people due to practicing Islam. Extremists are a tiny minority that the majority of Muslims are not okay with. Christian apologists, atheists and Zionists are hell-bent on their mission to pry people away from Islam. But what alternative do they offer? Who would want to convert to Christianity when these apologists come across as bitter and ill-intentioned individuals, obsessed with hating Muslims rather than glorifying and practicing their own faith? It is not attractive in the slightest. Who would want to be a Zionist when they give a million and one blood-soaked excuses, mental gymnastics and propaganda as to why it's okay to eliminate impoverished children and civilians en masse? And who would want to be an atheist when their moral compass is defined by gender confusion, their identity is dictated by their degenerate physical intimacy choices, and their ideology comes from man-made political agendas created to stupefy and control people? These groups even gloat about what is happening to people in Palestine, as if it's either a punishment on Muslims from the biblical God, or in the case of atheists, as if it's God's inability to protect Muslims. I count that with the Islamic belief that God has given us free will and will test us even if we claim we believe to see whether or not we are true believers. And in the next clip you will see Tate quote his favourite part of the Quran when he himself recently faced hardship in his life and explain how our holy book and Islamic religious practices brought him a sense of ease and understanding. I felt very fulfilled during that month. It was probably one of the easiest months in jail, wow. Ramadan. I don't know if this is completely true, and I don't want to talk like an Islamic scholar because I'm not, but if you're at war or if you're in a particularly difficult scenario, you don't have to fast, but I yeah. decided to fast anyway and to respect it. I was given my three meals a day, and I would pick out the bits of food that was edible, and I would cover it up with a little piece of plastic, and I would sit there all day long with the plastic over my paper plate and flick the ro roaches and flies and make sure nothing touched it until it came time to eat. I didn't eat before sunrise because I didn't have food before sunrise. I could only eat once a day when the sun went down. It was quite a beautiful feeling. I read as much of the Quran as I could. I don't know if I finished the entire thing in that month, but I finished the entire thing in jail. I felt fulfilled. I knew what I had to do. I had to pray. I had to read the Quran. I had to protect my food. I eventually got to eat it with my brother. I was genuinely sad when Ramadan ended. I would open the Quran on random pages. Every day I would just open it and I'd find a quote which I found applicable to the situation I was in. So I would leave it up to chance but I guess God was trying to give me particular messages. And every single time I opened that book, there was a passage or a message on the page I randomly selected that made me feel better every single time. My favorite in the whole Quran so far is just because you say you believe does not mean Allah will not test you. You're a believer does not mean your life gets easy. Absolutely not. Just because you say you believe does not mean you will not be tested. I saw it as a test. I actually saw the fact that I went to jail quite quickly after my reversion as a test. Do I really believe? And that's why I decided to respect Ramadan. Am I going to just throw it all out the window because my life's gotten hard? Or am I going to stick to what I said I believe in and show that I believe truly? And God was watching and God was paying attention as was I. And I feel very fortunate to have spent Ramadan Joe. Alhamdulillah for the lessons we receive from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are told clearly in the Quran how the non-believers have been against us from the start of time and how they will never be just with us unless we believe in the wickedness they believe in. Of course we must live peacefully amongst them but we also must be aware of their intentions and prejudices and ensure at the same time that we are safe from them. The Christian apologists like Tate said burn with jealousy towards Muslims which is evident through how instead of standing up for their religion against atheists who insult them and dictate how they should practice their faith, these apologists team up with those non-believers just to insult Islam. How does that make sense? You team up with the enemies of your own faith to throw shade on us but are too afraid to fight for your own religion. That's not from God at all. And these Zionists will be brought to justice, mark my words. What is happening in Palestine today will go down in the history books as a genocide of Muslims with the Zionists being labelled as the evil ones, similar to World War II. 
And as always, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward the Muslims that are steadfast in their faith with success and prosperity, which we can already see from the massive number of people converting to Islam worldwide. But there's one condition on us, and that is as Muslims, we must dedicate ourselves to the practice of our faith and never bend when we face adversity or hardship. My brothers and sisters, keep the people of Palestine in your prayers. Thank you for watching. Make sure to join my free telegram group via the link in the description, where we as Muslims can speak freely and without censorship about issues like this and in order to guide and support each other in our deen. Or if you have more serious personal issues you need help with, please feel free to book a call with me. And remember to like, subscribe and become a channel member for access to exclusive content. Until next time, inshallah, jazakallah khair. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allah